like when they're stripping and, and they're working, when you walk in there, you're gonna look to them like a beta loser customer. I tell guys on live programs to think of it like you're like the red color, okay? That they're looking at all these guys just like this one color. You wanna be the color that's blue, the one that stands out, that isn't some beta loser try hard customer. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I wanna to talk about how to pick up strippers, okay, how to bang strippers for free. Go into the strip club, meet a hot stripper or multiple hot strippers and be able to close the deal at a later time. Okay, I've done this on numerous occasions. I didn't track exactly, wish I had, but it's probably at least 30 girls that were strippers over the current count of 1,375 girls. Actually, probably a lot more, but it, I don't know. It, the, I look in my phone, there's like over 100 stripper contacts and I know that I close a lot of them. Okay, I've also had multiple monogamous uh, stripper girlfriends or just polyamorous stripper girlfriends in the past where I was one way monogamy. But anyways, before we continue, if you'd like to learn my entire system, not just the stripper game portion and know how to run the whole process from start to finish and get very good very fast, you can jump on a free 30 minute call. The link is in the description for that and that will allow you to learn the entire system start to finish in across eight weeks, okay? Also, if you're new to the channel and not yet a subscriber, please subscribe below, press the notification bell for new videos every day, usually around 2 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So, the stripper game, I have like a 13 point checklist here, actually 14 point checklist, that we're gonna go through, and these do not need to be done in this order, but the more of these you do, the better. So, number one, you want to break the customer frame. Okay, so most girls, like when they're stripping and, and they're working, when you walk in there, you're gonna look to them like a beta loser customer. I tell guys on live programs to think of it like you're like the red color, okay? That they're looking at all these guys just like this one color. You wanna be the color that's blue, the one that stands out, that isn't some beta loser try hard customer that's just has a dollar sign for them, okay? So you have to break out of the customer frame. That's the number one rule, okay? And I, and I said at the top of this list, number one overarching rule, stay out of the customer frame, okay? So checklist, that does not need to be done this order. Number one, break the customer frame. Number two, cement yourself as industry, okay? So what I'll do is I'll tell a story about how I'm a DJ. The students can say they're a promoter or whatever, but you don't wanna be bragging. This aids in the us versus them frame and also helps further take you out of the customer frame, okay? For the record, when I used to run seven day programs, one of the nights we'd go to the strip club and do strip club game, and very often the students would bang strippers. Okay, it's usually not on that same exact day because you can't pull them while they're working, but you can meet up with them either once they're off work or, or the next day or sometime soon after. Okay, number three, tell canned stories about how strippers are your favorite type of girl to date because they are chill and down to earth. Mention that you have dated strippers without bragging. This will demonstrate pre-selection and social proof. I say that as a DJ, I meet a lot of girls and don't like girls getting overprotective of my profession. And I say I'm sure you can relate. Okay, because stripper's number one pet peeve is guys getting jealous or bent out of shape about what they do for work and or judging them, okay? Number four, lead the conversation and don't let her execute her canned scripts, all right? She's gonna sit down and be like, hey, wow, you're handsome, where are you from? And she's gonna be executing her program from her end. So you have to break those conversational threads, break her script, and instead you're gonna be leading the conversation and not letting her execute her canned scripts, okay? Number five, never say that you will not get a private dance. Okay, always make it ambiguous or say you'll get one soon and cut the thread and change the topic. Make it clear, if you, if you go about making it clear that you'll never get a private dance, this will probably blow out the interaction, okay? It's like if you were, were talking to a girl in the club and she's like, just so you know, like no way in a million years am I ever gonna fuck you, all right? Why would you continue on in that interaction? Right, if you thought she was serious. So telling the girl that you know, you know, her goal, at least initially, before you've built investment in this and that, is to get you to get a dance, usually as fast as they can. Okay, so like the really uh, professional veteran ones, they'll come up to a dude, start giving him a bunch of fake IOIs, indicators of interest. The guy's like, wow, this hot girl likes me. And then she's like, let's go get a dance. And some percentage of the guys will go right then. Okay, if not, she'll try to butter them up a little more. And, but she's like screening, right? She's screening logistics. If the guy's like, hey, I don't have any money, or hey, I'm not gonna get a dance, boom, done, she's gonna move on. She hit a hard logistical problem. Same thing that I'm doing when I'm in a nightclub, and I'm like, hey, we should go back to my place. 
boom, I have a boyfriend or I have a husband, he's here. Okay, have a nice night, I move on immediately, right? So you don't wanna like tell her right up front that you're not gonna get a dance because that's gonna blow out the interaction most likely, especially if you do it too soon. Number six, set sexual frames without being creepy or like the other guys, okay? So you're not gonna be like, wow, you're adorable, you're you're so amazing, you're so beautiful. Uh, wow, like you're not gonna be just like, like going goo goo gaga over her, okay? Like you can't fucking handle it right? You don't want to be, remember, you don't want to be like these other fucking dudes. So I'm not staring at their body a ton. I'm not like gushing compliments. I'm just kind of acting cool, calm, and collected. Like I'm used to girls like you all the fucking time. I've banged lots of strippers. You know, this isn't a big deal to me, right? I'm, I'm an industry person myself, right? And I'll even, I'll even lots of times say that I don't even usually come to strip clubs that much, which isn't true. I mean, during the pandemic, I haven't been going, but I love strip clubs. I used, I remember back in Philadelphia on off game nights, you know, on a Sunday night or, or whatever, when there's nowhere to go out and do game, I would often go to the strip club and if I couldn't get people to go with me, I would just go solo. And the reason being is it's like a collection of stunners around the clock. Okay. So no matter which, what time of the day you're going in, you're going to find hot girls there that you can game. Okay. So even when there's not like a, a valid venue to hit up, once your stripper game is good, you can fuck a lot of these girls. Okay. So number seven, don't give her attention for her looks or give her compliments about her looks. Okay. So when you're setting sexual frames, you're doing it kind of from like an authoritative place. And again, not, not trying to gain anything and all this and that. You're not going to want to be giving her attention over her looks or giving her compliments about her looks. Why? Because everyone else is doing that. Why? Because it's going to turn you into that red color or push you more towards that direction. Okay. And I'll reread these at the end to give you a, a recap. Number eight, act normal. Do not be intimidated by her beauty or the fact that she's fucking either fully naked or, or partially naked. Don't put her on a pedestal. All right. You can't be all like, Oh, oh my God, uh, right? She's gonna see through that instantly and boom, you're now labeled the red color and boom, now you are fucked, okay? So, and, and again, this is easier said than done if it's like your first time going to a strip club and there's a naked girl sitting on your lap that's like a nine or a 10. It's gonna be tough to be icy cool, right? But try to, <laughs> try to be cool, try not to make it a big deal, okay? Constantly be steering toward, number nine, constantly be steering towards the frame that the two of you should hang out at a later date. I usually frame it somewhat indirect that I throw parties and I want to invite her sometime. Then over text message, I switch to direct. This is how I number close. So it's an easier ask to say, hey, I, I throw these electronic music parties sometimes. I want to invite you when I throw a party, right? Okay, then over text, Hey, what's up? Let's grab a coffee sometime. Hey, let's grab a drink sometime. Hey, let's meet up in my place and do such and such, right? And I never invited her to some fucking group thing or some party, but it's easier for her to give the number that way versus, oh, wow, you're so sexy. I'd love to take you out on a date, okay? Boom, red color. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, I can't get my number out of work, right? And she's going to just blow you off. Yeah, here we go. Speaking of not being on the... Oh, here we go. Well, that's number 11. Well, I'll jump ahead to number 11. If she can't give her her number by you putting it in her phone, say that you realize she can't give it with cameras or managers, that's a valid thing. Like a lot of clubs, they like literally are not able to fucking give their number and there's cameras and managers watching and shit like that, okay? So if she can't give her number, okay, then say that you realize she can't give it with the cameras or managers and just to write it down, okay? So then she'll go up to the bar, she'll get a piece of paper and a, and a pen and she'll write it and it'll be off and it won't be drawing attention. Well, off to the side, it won't be drawing attention. And that's how you can get the number without you know, without breaking any of these stupid fucking rules at the club. Okay, if she won't write it down, have her say it out loud and you can memorize it. Okay, and numbers, at least in the US, are going to be, what you wanna do is like use something called chunking, mental chunking, so you store them in groups. If she's like, oh, I'm this area code, these first three digits, you just store that as one piece of information in your brain and just put it off to the side. Okay, then your brain in short term memory can store like seven pieces of information. So you throw the area code off to the side and then you can repeat the next seven digits wrote in your head and then get your number, get your phone out when the time is as soon as as soon as possible before you fucking forget it and enter it in you can enter it in like on the down low or whatever okay number 10 make an excuse and make sure you you show her later like be like is this the number right because you want to you want to make sure that you remembered it correctly number 10 make an excuse about why you are there Okay, further keeps you out of the customer frame. I usually say that I'm there for my friend's birthday and don't usually come to places like this. Why? Because if she thinks that you're normally going to places like this, then maybe you're normally paying for dances, maybe you're normally like 
you know, fucking going goo goo gaga over a bunch of half naked chicks. Okay, so instead, this isn't a big deal. You don't usually go into places like this. Why? Because you can get lots of hot girls on your own. You don't need to go in and pay for dances and this and that. However, you happen to be there tonight because of a friend's birthday or some other event. Okay. Number 12, I will sometimes get one private dance, which is usually like fucking 20 bucks or something. Uh, the equivalent of like buying them a drink or two. Okay. When I lived in Vegas, Miami, New York City, a, a fucking shot or drink is usually like 15, 20 bucks anyways. Um, but I, I said here, I'll, I'll sometimes get one private dance to physically escalate, but I do it under the frame that I feel bad for taking up so much of her time. I only get a private dance if I've already number closed her and set up the logistics to hang out at another time. So basically the only, the only time I'll do the private dance, you already have the number, you've already set up some kind of plan for a meetup, and now I'm just kind of like cementing things further and also sexualizing things. So during the, the dance in the private room, I'll talk dirty to her during the private dance and say like, we're gonna have so much fun, we hang out, blah, 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 kind of setting the stage. And then I'll leave the club immediately after the dance because then, you know, if you just got a dancer and you're talking dirty and this and that and you're touching her whole body and then you're like back in your seat and now she has to go around and do her fucking job and flirt with other dudes and you're sitting there like, dude, to do it right? And like, it's just awkward if you happen to like make eye contact while she's like all over another dude or whatever and you're just like over there staring and then she's like oh god this guy thinks that i'm like with him now you just you just don't want to even if even if you're fine with it and you're cool which you should be you know you don't want them like thinking like oh now he sees me the other guy maybe he's gonna be upset or jealous i don't want him being possessive maybe i just won't meet up with this guy so i'll just get the dance and then boom bounce out okay 13 do not be afraid to approach them rather than making them come to you Okay, and 14, do not be afraid to merge sets and play them off of each other. All right, so let me read through these again one more time. And by when I talk about merging sets, say you talked to one before and got her number and there's some other new hot chick sitting on your lap. Hey, come, she's coming by. Hey, come over here real quick. Are you guys friends? Like this girl's cool, this girl's cool. No one's doing that. Okay, and except for maybe in a very cheesy way, like, hey, ladies, every, you know, like, everybody come over here. You're like a fucking loser. Instead, <laughs> instead, you've got one chick and you're like the fucking man. You're the guy in charge. And you're like, hey, you come over here too. I'll just grab it, even if I haven't got their number. I'll have one sit in my lap, another how one walks by. Hey, come over here, sit on this leg too. Now they're both sitting here. I'm flirting with both and they're both kind of like trying to compete now. So, you know, you wanna be introducing people, different people. If, if there's one that I'm like not particularly interested in and comes over, I'll throw her off on one of my friends, etc. Um, or if I have like another one that I've already number closed watching me and one comes in. See, there's like different tactical considerations. So let me recap this. But I hope this is all good information for you guys. Uh, and I fucking love the strip clubs. They're, I think they're fucking awesome. They're just a great place to just like fuck. It's like an oasis for me. It's like a great place to just like hang out, talk shit with your friends. I used to like fucking getting drunk at the strip club, et cetera, I don't drink anymore. But it still is a great place to just like kick it and, and you can pick up girls at, around the clock basically, except like, you know, in the middle of the night, unless you're in Miami where they have uh, 11 strip club, it's open 24 seven. I actually have an ex-girlfriend that I had that I turned into a stripper. So I, I've had multiple girlfriends that I've taken them to the strip club and they're like, this seems cool. And I'm like, okay, you know, why don't you work here? And then that always ends in flames. But I, that happened a few times. And one of the girls uh, went to apply at 11. They're like, we haven't hired anyone in like a month. The girls auditioning every day. She got naked and, and within like 10 seconds, they're like, all right, you're hired. She was, just had really low body fat, was like exotic, all these tattoos and all this shit. Anyways, so yeah, it's, I, I just fucking, I think it's, it's a cool place to hang out. So, okay, so just recapping the checklist one last time. Uh, number one, break the customer frame. Number two, cement yourself as industry. Tell the story about how you're a DJ or promoter without bragging. Aids in the us versus them and also helps further take you out of the customer frame. By the way, we'll put this whole checklist down in the description. Number three, tell Can story about how strippers are your favorite type to date because they are chill and down to earth. Mention that you have dated strippers without bragging, which is pre-selection and social proof. I say that as a DJ, I meet a lot of girls and don't like girls getting overprotective of my profession. I say I'm sure you can relate. Strippers number one pet peeve is guys getting jealous or bent out of shape about what they do and are judging them. Number four, lead the conversation and don't let her execute her can scripts. Number five, never say that you will not get a private dance, always make it ambiguous or say you will get one soon and cut thread, change topic. Making it clear that you will never get a private dance will blow out the set. Number six, set sexual frames up being creepier like the other guys. Number seven, don't give her attention for her looks or give her compliments about her looks. Number eight, act normal. Do not be intimidated by her beauty or put her on a pedestal. Number nine, constantly be steering towards the frame the two of you should hang out at a later date. I usually frame it somewhat indirect that I throw parties and want to invite her some time. Then I switch to direct over text. This is how I number close. Number 10, make an excuse about why you are there, 
which further keeps you out of the customer frame. I usually sit in there for my friend's birthday and don't usually come to places like this, okay? Number 11, if you can't give, give, your, give her phone number out, you putting it in her phone, say that you realize she can't give it with cameras or managers and just write it down. If she won't write it down, have her say it out loud and memorize it. Number 12, I'll sometimes get one private dance to physically escalate, but I do it under the frame that I feel bad for taking up so much of her time. I only give it a, get a private dance if I've already number close to her and set up the logistics to hang out at another time. I will talk dirty to her during the private dance. I leave the club immediately after the dance. Number 13, do not be afraid to approach rather than making them come to you. Do not be afraid to merge sets and play them off of each other. Okay, so that's the whole recap. If you want to learn the entire system, not just the super game portion, I've dialed everything into a fully optimized level. I just put out a testimonial of a guy that's 300 lay count that still received massive upgrades to his system, even at a very advanced and elite level. 300 girls already, and I was still able to maximize and optimize a whole bunch of things okay so do not delay the spots are limited on that program and do not think that you're you know you've got everything figured out when you know even this guy at 300 ladies did not have everything figured out far from it okay that doesn't mean he was bad at game but there's just so many optimizations that can be made regardless of your level okay so do not hesitate jump on that free 30 minute call and what's hilarious by the way is we have these coaches running around like A.G. Hayden at 100 lay count, okay, or Coach Kyle at 120 lay count. I'm getting students signing up for my program at 300 girls. That's triple what these coaches have done, okay, and, and they think they're the, the cool guys on campus now. So, <laughs> um, or Myron Gaines. Uh, anyways, if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe below, press the notification bell for alerts of new videos every day, usually at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you check the description for the entire 14 point checklist for the stripper game. Make sure you like, comment, and share. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.